atmosphere like at this rally? It was crowded. I mean, that's typical with Donald Trump's events, particularly when they're indoors. It was filled uh, the entire venue, notably, though, same exact venue where Kamala Harris was earlier in the week, which Donald Trump harped on repeatedly during that rally. He actually it seemed that he was really frustrated that she had these celebrity performers because he you know, continuously throughout his very lengthy speech last night, uh, was criticizing that she had celebrity performers, people like Megan Thee Stallion, earlier in the week when she was at that exact same venue. Uh, and he called that phony. And that's something that we're actually continuously going to hear from Donald Trump's mm-hmm. campaign. I'm told when I talk to seniors, uh, senior advisors, they say that's a new line of attack, that they want to try and paint her as someone who is fake. And he said that last night as well, that she's fake, 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 and I will fight, fight, fight for you. It's a line we've heard Donald Trump use before. He's going to continue to use that. What I also found interesting was at one point, just talking about the performers, he actually tied Harris to Hillary Clinton. And this is kind of what we're seeing now. Donald Trump has really reverted back to his 2016 playbook. His attacks have become nastier. He's now has another woman that he's facing off with. And we're seeing kind of the same parallels from then now creep into this current campaign. And he argued that uh, Clinton had Bruce Springsteen uh, perform for her back up in the lead up to 2016. He said that was phony as well. He also made a comment that he has a, quote, bad trait, which is that he only likes people who like him. But I do want to actually point your attention to something that I found very interesting, because at one point, Donald Trump kind of admitted that they need to define her. They still are figuring out how to define her. I want you to take a listen to what he said. You know, four months ago, she was considered grossly incompetent by the fake news. Now they're saying, oh, isn't she wonderful? Isn't she wonderful? No, she's not wonderful. So we have to work hard to define her. We, I, I don't want to even define her. I just want to say who she is. She's a horror show. She'll destroy our country. So... I mean, a little bit of saying the quiet part out loud there. And then he <laughs> caught himself and said, actually, I don't need to define her. She's horrible. Um, this is something that has come up many times in my conversations with Trump's advisors, which is, you know, for the last several months, really this entire election cycle, they had ignored Harris altogether. Their entire playbook had been to try and go after an unpopular 81 year old incumbent. Now they're reimagining the entire campaign, obviously so close to November. And it's been a bit of a struggle. I think you can hear him kind of throwing the kitchen sink of attacks at her because they're trying to figure out what sticks. It's almost like he was repeating something that was told to him by, you know, someone in his campaign. Mm-hmm. Like, we've got to work really hard to, to define, define her. her. And he kind of <laughs> right. caught himself, you know. Um, he all, I mean, he was all over the map, it seemed like, in that speech yesterday. But he also mentioned uh, the debate that mm-hmm. he's putting his foot down. It's my way. We're going to do it on Fox News or, or nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know what Kamala Harris is, is going to do at this point. It doesn't seem likely. I mean, so the question is, will there even be a debate at this point? Ah, it's still a question that remains. I yeah. think it's very unclear what's going to happen. You're kind of seeing both, you know, the Trump campaign as well as the Harris campaign dig into their current positions, which is, as you mentioned, Donald Trump made clear that he has agreed to this Fox News debate, which wasn't on the table before. Uh, he said it would be held in Pennsylvania and on September 4th and that he wants to have a live audience. Obviously, he thinks, and I can tell you this from my conversations with his team as well, that it's a friendlier uh, network. There could be friendlier moderators toward him. Harris, his team, for the part, their part, though, is saying that, look, you had already agreed to this September 10th debate with ABC News. That is the debate that we will be showing up to. She's also indicated herself, and her team has said this as well, that regardless of whether or not Donald Trump shows up, she plans to use yeah. that um, time herself. But... You know, Trump has been saying and his advisors have said this as well, which is that, you know, their agreement to go to that ABC debate on September 10th was with Joe Biden, not and analyzing it. Mm. I'm curious because obviously, you know him, you've worked with him, uh, you know how he operates there. The last several weeks have been high highs and low lows uh, for the former president in terms of his positioning in this race. He came out um, of that horrific assassination attempt right into the RNC, what was widely considered to be a very successful week for them. Uh, and and then the race just shifted in such a huge way where, to your point, it wrestled away the attention from him, uh, really gave momentum to the Democrats that they're going to try to sustain. How does he react and think about 
a situation like that. Some people are resilient. Uh, some people don't have that resilience and resort back to old tendencies. It seems like, as you noted, we're seeing the 2016 playbook come back out. How do you see this? Well, listen, he's certainly resilient, but I, I want to point out that I'm now in the category that I barely know Donald Trump. So despite knowing him for two decades, working on that campaign, doing 71 campaign stops, serving for 11 days as the White House communication director, I barely know him. And so just like Project 2025, he had 85 of his loyalists there. He barely knows any of them as well. So he's a very transactional guy and he's a very disposable guy. And this should speak to the reasons why he's able to get rid of Vance. Uh, but no, he's he's floundering right now. He's having a very hard time coming up with the right media message and the right narrative versus a younger, more energetic candidate that is building a Barack Obama coalition against them. And he knows he lost to Joe Biden because Joe Biden was capable of building a coalition of people that's just larger than whatever Donald Trump's coalition is. And so you have David Pluff on that campaign right now. They're going to go back to that strategy. The momentum is with the vice president. And so he is floundering. He's upset with his staff. He's arguing with his staff. He went against two people last week in terms of the way he handled himself at the at that event, uh, blowing those racist dog whistles that he was doing. Uh, he thought that that's what his MAGA people wanted him to say, that the vice president wasn't, quote unquote, black. Forgive me for even entertaining that on your show. I apologize, but it's just something that a presidential candidate is doing here in America. And so we have to address it. Uh, and this is sort of the absurdity of Mr. Trump. And I think people are very, very tired of this. And so what's at stake here is for the vice president, Vice President Harris, to build this massive Obama-like coalition and put an end to Trumpism. And so that whatever resolves itself in the Republican Party post-Trump will be a better version of that party than what we're seeing today. All right. Anthony Scaramucci, thank you for your time on this Saturday. We appreciate it. Nice to be here with you. On the debate, possibly, you know, something being added that may be more neutral yeah, to yeah. both of them since this is a little bit of a reset. And that's basically what he's trying to do. That's what he's do. trying to say. That's I mean, you, you to have do. to remember from the very beginning of the debate conversation when it was Joe Biden as the presumptive nominee, um, Donald Trump was the one who was kind of just saying, yes, I'll do that. Because the Biden campaign came out and, you know, to Biden's detriment as the nominee, obviously, but said that this is what we want to do. We want to in June, we want to in September, mm -hmm. we're doing um, one with CNN, we're doing one with AP. BC. This is Donald Trump trying to take back the narrative, not look like he's the person that's just like being pulled along by first Joe, Joe Biden and now Vice President Kamala Harris. You know, what I'm hearing from people at ABC is they are moving forward as if there's a debate. <laughs> they are doing their prep. They are getting their questions together. Um, they are right. thinking about September 10th. Um, it does even if, pardon me, even if um, only Vice President Harris shows up. Then it's a town, now it's a town then hall. Then it's a town right? hall. Now okay. it's a town hall with just Vice right. President Kamala Harris. And so if the Trump campaign wants to cede, you know, 90 minutes to their to <laughs> his, um, opponent, to, to the, his opponent, then that's likely to happen. Um, I will say, you know, the Harris campaign, the folks behind the scenes have said, we want to do ABC and we'll talk about anything else after that. But this, we're talking about the ABC debate. That's what we've been prepping for. That's what the schedule allows for. But all of this could change. I mean, <laughs> Right. This, this entire election has just been like thing after thing after thing changing. That can happen some more here. But I will say the idea that um, Vice President Harris is scared to debate, she's excited to debate. I've talked to the folks around her, both the inner, inner, inner circle and the inner circle and the folks outside of that. Everyone is on the same page about being ready to debate. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know. Putting a prosecutor. She's a prosecutor. She's, for a, she's, sake. Not, she's, she's not. She's, she's not. Never she's not afraid scared to of. She's not prosecuting scared of that. the case. And she. Yeah. I will. I will, I will say she has also been on the campaign trail doing these mini town hall style events where yeah. she will go. She'll sit with someone. She'll be in conversation and she'll take questions. And so she is primed and ready to kind of have a conversation, answer questions about specific policy issues. Donald Trump. He has been doing these, you know, big box, and I have mm -hmm. to use quotes when I say big box because he had his rally at the same place in Atlanta yesterday that Vice President Harris had hers. Mm -hmm. oh, how'd and that turn out? It, not, not well. And Donald Trump <laughs> himself on the stage says, I'm not happy. Like, he, there are a lot of <laughs> stream of consciousness <laughs> thoughts happening. He does tell you what he's he, thinking. He often. tells you right what he's thinking. Yeah. And I just, I think that the, the format that he has been taking in his engagement on the campaign trail, it has not 
um, supported the idea of debating a, 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 you know, a seasoned debater, if you will. And that's who Vice President Harris is. He is concerned. This is what Donald Trump um, had to say about the vice president, about trying to define her. So we have to work hard to define her. We, I, I don't want to even define her. I just want to say who she is. She's a horror show. She'll destroy our country. She doesn't want anybody saying Merry Christmas. Now she's denying it. You have a candidate who is fake, fake, fake. On the other hand, you have a president who will fight, fight, fight for America. Fight, fight, fight. He's just repeating what the consultants <laughs> told him. That was an internal campaign conversation, mm -hmm. the senior yes. advisor conversation that was had with yes. them. <laughs> Sir, we have to define her. You have to stay on message. I've been there, I've, I've been there giving the, delivering the message. Not to Donald Trump, honey. <laughs> He's undisciplined and, frankly, a bad candidate. They just don't know. They don't know how to run against Vice President Kamala Harris. They were ready, prepared, and excited to run against Joe Biden. Oh, they thought the election was over. Entire plan. They thought the election was over. <laughs> they had every. They had everything they needed. You know, and you know, President Biden was giving them plenty of evidence every single day to what they were saying, how they were framing him. They are having a hard time, clearly, framing and defining, as he was putting it, um, Vice President Harris. You know, last week we talked to um, for Playbook. We talked to a bunch of both Republicans kind of in the apparatus, mm -hmm. but then folks on the campaign. And they said, we are ready. We're, you know, the first week we were called it off guard, but now we're coming yeah. back and we're, we have a whole different idea. We're going to talk about, you know, her as the borders are, which isn't true. We're going to talk about X, Y, and Z. But then what ended up happening is, I um, said every turn. The three pillars that upheld Donald Trump have all collapsed. And that's why he's scared. Pillar one was being able to draw the biggest, healthiest crowds, whether we like to admit it or not. You know, uh, he was always able to draw bigger crowds than his rivals in the Republican Party and then most Democrats, not Obama levels, but basically bigger than everybody except Obama and maybe Bernie Sanders. But Bernie didn't run in a general election. He was always able to draw the biggest crowds and no Republican came close to him. But now his crowds are shrinking, they're empty, they're getting shut down by protesters, and critically, Kamala is drawing some bigger crowds than him. We've never seen that. Hillary didn't draw bigger crowds, and certainly Biden, because Biden abided by COVID restrictions and Trump didn't, Biden didn't draw bigger crowds than Trump, right? He didn't. This time it's different. You're also seeing the pillar fall that Trump is like, oh, I'm tough. I'll take on anybody all the time. I want to do this debate. I want to do that debate. I'm the bully. I'm the big man in the room. And when he remember when he uh, debated Hillary, he did the thing where he kind of got into her personal space to try or throw her off all of that. Well, he's so afraid of Kamala. He one won't get into her personal space because she'll lay the smack down on him. But two, he's afraid to even be in the same building as her. And three, you're seeing also no one have faith for the first time ever. Republicans actually believe Trump is losing because here's the thing. He lost in 2020. We know that, but they, they didn't believe it. They thought the whole time they were winning and they thought they were winning up until Biden dropped out and was replaced by Harris. But for the first time ever, Republicans actually believe they're losing and that's terrifying to them.